Welcome back, VidHeads. Well, guess who put your girl in the hot seat today? Well, we have a great video coming forward in regards to anonymous interviews after this. So, I'm sitting here checking out these comics. <laughs> There's some weird stuff, man. I'll tell you what. Weird. But, you know, time comes that comics are old. Time for something new. You are paying COD online on your cell phones. Tell you what, good stuff, great graphics, good gameplay. There are some people that are really good at them. It's like myself. I'm not saying I'm good. Maybe I just did. Because I am, but it's all right. Sorry. Yes, welcome back, VidHeads. If you've been around this channel any length of time, you know that this channel is all about iron sharpening iron, and we're all taking our skill to the next level. If you're all right with that, go ahead and hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell because we got a lot of different content coming at you. In this particular video, I have the anonymous interview edit. So I wanna show you how to do the anonymous interview, why well, I call it the anonymous interview. So basically what I'm gonna do is put a blur over the face of the person that's talking and then kind of manipulate their voice a little bit. Here is one way of doing it and it's nice, quick and easy. All right, it is, yes. The first thing we wanna do is get into our sequence and then we're gonna use what is called the mosaic blur. Well, I call it a blur. I think it's really a style that Premiere Pro labels it as. So let's go ahead. So we're gonna type in our mosaic and go down to the mosaic blur down here under style. We're gonna drag and drop it onto our footage. And once we get it onto our footage, you see the whole um, screen is, uh, got the mosaic um, blur style on it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Eclipse. That Eclipse tool then give us a little eclipse. And with this Eclipse tool, you can shape it and scale it the way you wanna scale it, uh, get it to fit where, however you wanna you know, get it to fit. So with that being said, I'm gonna put it over the face and then I'm gonna adjust the count box, how many boxes I actually wanted to show up. And I wanted to get, you know, a little closer to more pixelated looking. And so I'm gonna adjust the count here. So get it a little bit more. So you guys feel free to play with this. That's the whole beauty of all this and being creative, being able to play with it and do what it is you need to do to get it to um, look the way you want it to look. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our feathering I like to feather it, as you can see, once I start using that feather, uh, then I'm gonna scale it in a little bit, get it like up on the face, so it's not, you know, too obtrusive. And so now I'm kind of measuring up the way I like it. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have the mosaic kind of matched up and kind of, you know, fitting where we want it to be. So what has to happen at this point, and this is the power of uh, Premiere Pro, um, you can actually track it. What you wanna do is you wanna start at the beginning of the clip. You wanna make sure that you're not starting like in the middle of the clip or whatever. You wanna start at the beginning of the clip it's where you want it to actually start tracking. So you want to tr start tracking from the beginning of the clip. And so if you don't actually uh, do the tracking, then you're gonna have to keyframe it and keep moving it however you want it. And that is very tedious and is very time consuming. That's why it's such a power feature in Premiere Pro. So this is what happens when you do not uh, track it. So, I'm sitting here checking out these comics. <laughs> There's weird stuff, man. As you can see, the uh, mosaic um, blur stayed in the same place. So now, let us go ahead and hit the tracking by hitting this play arrow right there. So you wanna make sure, again, you start at the beginning of the clip and you hit the play arrow, which will go through the whole clip and it will adjust keyframes for you. And here I wanna make sure I, I, I explain. One thing I found is better if you color your footage the way you want it to be colored before you actually begin to uh, track it. 
And so I shoot in log. So I shoot in a flat profile and I believe it needs that contrast. And that's where it's actually using the contrast of the clip to kind of keep your tracking on point. So there's that. So now let's go back in the beginning of the clip. So as you can see, see check out these comics. Now it is tracking. There's weird stuff, man. I'll tell you what weird, but you know, so now you can see that it tracks. So that was very simple. All we did was we put, brought the mosaic um, blur or style, put it on our footage. We hit the eclipse and we kind of scaled that eclipse in. We kind of fine tuned how we want the mosaic to look as far as the little boxes. And then we, you know, kind of fit it exactly on his face where we wanted it. And then we just tracked it. That was about it. So it was a very simple, very easy thing to do. So now let us kind of manipulate the voice. So we're going to give the audience the appearance that we are manipulating the voice so that their voice is not recognizable. So what we're going to do is go to pitch shifter. So we're going to type in pitch shifter. Then we're going to drag and drop that right on the audio. So then we can bring it to you the little edit button in our um, effects panel. We're going to hit that and it's going to bring up our little interface. And normally for this, we're going to do like a negative two and a 13. Kind of give us somewhere around um, a little bit of a uh, edit on the voice. So now when we play it back. So I'm sitting here to check out these comics. There's weird stuff, man. I'll tell you what. Weird. Well, there you have it. It doesn't take a lot to do this particular edit. I hope it unlocks some of the mysteries of Premiere Pro. The more you do these kind of things, the more you get used to doing uh, other edits and being a little more creative. Don't don't be afraid to play around with all the different settings. Just use the undo <laughs> if you need to use the undo, and just play around and try to see what you can create and how you can make things look different. And so it's all about the uniqueness of your style and what you want it to look like. Also, I'm gonna be getting more into HD versus 4K, because I think that we are looking at 4K and grossly underestimating HD as if it doesn't exist because 4K is out. And I want you to understand that HD is a very viable um, resolution to record in. I'm going to be coming out with other videos that's actually going to show uh, 4K and HD. And we're going to see if you guys notice which clips is which. We're going to do some of that kind of stuff. It's pretty fun. Now, I came up with this idea because I saw uh, Michael Turner's video on the new camera that he purchased. And I'm going to put that link up in your upper right hand corner go ahead and click on it and if you guys are into weddings and that kind of thing or you're looking to start out in weddings his michael turner's channel is a good channel to check out because he has a lot of information about cameras and weddings and those types of things so make sure you check that out and go show him some love well that's it for this video vid hits i'm aaron jones i'm your big brother i got your back make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the bell because i got a lot of different content coming at you Make sure you go out and you film something and kill it.